Whenever you're ready, could you talk through what you've built? Yeah. Um, do you want her to play it while I talk? <laughs> um, maybe just for understandability, we could play then talk or talk then play. Either works for me. Yeah. So we built a guitar looper. Okay. So like, uh, it has a play button and also the chord button. So when I press the record button, it's gonna record what I play. And then when I stop the recording, it's gonna like loop through that recording. And then I can add, also add more uh, layers to that track when I click the recording again. And we also have a clean button that cleans the, like, the entire track. Okay. And then if you wanna mm -hmm. save what you recorded, uh, there's the UR to like serial communication. Mm -hmm. Okay. You either say like save and then into like the number of tracks that you wanna save it to. Mm -hmm. So it wants to be saved in the FRAM. And mm -hmm. then later on, if you wanna play it back, you just say play and then enter like Select the, the track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Yeah. So and then back we down. have LEDs um, signifying like which state you're on, like either recording mm -hmm. or playing. So recording will be red LED, and then playing will be green LED. Mm -hmm. The yellow LED is for first recording because during first recording, um, after you click the recording button, it will give you a four-time red LED flash uh -huh. to tell you like mm -hmm. like the beat or like the tempo to tell you that the recording will be on. Mm -hmm. And then later on, when you record it again, the blink King won't happen, it will just be the, 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 the instance you click instance, it. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. We also have a red and green LED, so when it is recording, the red LED will turn on. Okay. And when it's playing, the green LED will turn off. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. We can demonstrate. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So, like, this is our first time recording. So no, that's playing back. You're yeah, not playing. Yeah. So now we're playing again and again. And also the track lengths will be set by the first time playing. Okay. Yeah. The maximum is like 10 seconds. Okay. Okay, now I messed up, so I can, <laughs> I can stop this. And you can see. Yeah, and yeah, but it, it is there. So it's still playing the first mm -hmm. recording, and you've just cleared the track that. Uh, um, uh, this record is added to that track. I have to clean the entire. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. To sure. And okay. I'm pushing this button, just clear the entire track. Okay. Both tracks are playing. Yeah. And say you want to save this one, mm -hmm. you like it. Uh, on the serial, you'll put, uh, type save and type the number. Say we save it in the first one. Mm -hmm. And now we clear. It. So mm -hmm. we have a clean track right now. Mm -hmm. and by typing play and we just save it to one so we play it one it'll start playing again and you can still um, so record, record on top, on top of it yeah oh and you can still record on top of it yeah. so when you click save it's going into this external mm -hmm. frame, yes. which is non-volatile correct so you yeah. could detach power and plug it back in and it's all mm -hmm. still there mm -hmm. wow I can hear the other track yeah. there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because he's adding more tracks, so like the noise will be. The like noise starts to add up a little bit. Yeah, because we, we want to prevent overflow, so we have the tracks, like the volume of them. Sure, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Is there a, um, a limit to the number of tracks that you can record on top of one another? Not really. No, okay. Not really. Okay. Add, add. Yeah. Wow, that's really neat. Not the wire. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so when you're recording a new track, mm -hmm. does that get stored while you're sort of recording and playing with it? Does it get stored in RAM on the Pico? Yeah. 
And then when you're ready to save it, it shuffles over to the external yep. F-RAM? Yes. yes. I see. Okay. So all the sound being played is kind of like playing from the buffer. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, we tried the noise problem. Um, we tried to increase the gain. Yeah. And then added the like, shock here. Yeah. Yeah. Shock key, dial, dial. Maybe we can now record another try so we can store in a different. Oh, location. sure. Yeah. Now you can play back to mm -hmm. the song you just recorded. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to, you could still play back the first yeah. one as well. Yeah. Awesome. Do you want to try? Do you play guitar? I, I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> can you explain a little? So, mm -hmm. so the signal come. This is an analog signal yep. coming out of the mm -hmm. guitar. Yep. Can you tell me a little bit about the circuit that it goes into here? So it goes into to an amplifier circuit that okay. mm -hmm. has a gain of approximately three mm -hmm. okay. to four, and it will amplify the guitar. Yeah, it will amplify, mm -hmm. and we also have a voltage dose circuit yeah. on that part. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like the pick, the pick of guitar signal is around and one, we two change volts. this um, mm -hmm. a little bit lower. I think right now it's mm -hmm. a fifty-one mm -hmm. minute, so that the gain is. Like three to four. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So you're taking a relatively low amplitude signal from mm -hmm. the guitar and amplifying and then we'll it up. The higher and then you're sampling that on the ADC with the ADC yeah. in the and Pico. And we use the thinner dial on that side to prevent if she strums it too hard. And too hard. And then I see. Yeah. I see. And it's sampling at uh, eight thousand hertz. Eight thousand hertz. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Outputting at the same rate. Sure. Yeah. That is really impressive. And we use the um. Like on pickle ADC and a DAC synthetic. Yeah, yeah. That's so funny. Really cool. Thank you all. That's a really cool demo.